It's quick car talk time, motherfuckers. And today, we're going to do a follow-up on what we talked on in episode two. In episode two, we of course talked about, you know, good concept don't need reference, and that was kind of like a clickbait, and then we talked about that in the end, you always need reference. Um, after that, I have been receiving a lot of requests um, to do like a follow-up, like how do you actually apply it, how to collect it, what is your thinking process, do you have the shapes in your head before you actually set it on a paper. Um, these answers are very, very hard to hmm, answer. Um, at school, you know, when somebody like joins a whole program, then, you know, in time we go through that journey. So, you know, I can do only that much during this, you know, quick art talk time, but I will still do my best, you know. So, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a follow up. I'm like even prepared myself this time, right? Because um, I also like received some feedback that I should be like less chaotic. So, you know, I'm learning too all the time. So yeah, collecting reference versus applying reference, right? So, uh, you know, design is here the key feature actually. So actually I'll have to like main, make like another layer here and then boom, design right like this is needed to be a concept designer i think first of all the word concept artist is sometimes a little bit misleading because um well you you're not an artist for the sake of being like you know a fine artist you know like you we are not like illustrators selling beautiful paintings of you know a landscape or a dog or you know we are not being paid for that we use art as a tool to show our ideas and that is design right anyway what should what should you do to um to apply reference you know how to come up with those shapes let's say you have to design a vehicle how do you how do you even start coming up with your own shapes for a vehicle right so i'm gonna like made like this boring list we're going to you know um go through point by point and i'll just like you know um have like a couple of words about it and then i'm gonna show photos what my thinking process was with photos and some other reference to um make you know uh, this scout card designs these thumbnails right and i will talk about why i chosen this team and then the second part i will present you know a quick demo so i don't know how long it's gonna be but you know, since I'm not very frequent with these episodes, I thought, um, yeah, you know, let's make it, uh, let's make it a little bit more uh, advanced, I guess, right? So we have like a bit, little bit of a, it will be like a sim, very simplified version of what we do at school. So yeah, here we go. Uh, the first thing that is obvious about collecting reference is, uh, yeah, you guessed it, photos, right? You can actually see all the layers with, you know, oh well. Anyway, I don't want to be all chaotic, so I like have like every point on every separate layer. Photos, of course, obvious. Collecting photos, collecting, you know, visual data to support your visual library is always the key. Never neglect that. Um, never even start a design without reference, all right? without enriching your mind first. So these photos could range from you know, photos from the internet, Google, photos that you take on your own, photos that um, you got from your friend, uh, from your own observation, um, and of course, you know, stay on theme. And then of course, organize them, right? I have my photos, like as chaotic as I am, I have my photos organized. I, uh, <laughs> hold on, I actually do. Here, I go to, hold on. I go to my gallery, textures and ref, and then I have like, you know, subfolders, mechanical stuff. It's my favorite, right? And I have like everything from jet ski to Kotaku post, Sherman, the Sherman tank, ships, D34, um, you know, and it's still chaotic, but I am, you know, it's personal. So I, I know what what is where. Um, so I advise you to do the same instead of, you know, always going on your own scout you know you this is like i've been building this up for years this is you know a folder structure that i started in 2011 all right so um 
I advise you do the same. Uh, hold on, now I want to go back where my folder was because we're going to talk about it later. There we go. Okay, so next point is um, museums. I think um, it's not, we don't talk about it much. Um, I, it's kind of like a bummer because museums are so mind enriching. Like um, everything you do, everything you do with concept art, you extract that from the real world. But museums allow you to like, they're like video games, actually, if you think about it, because they zip all the cool things about a certain theme and put it in a building or, you know, in an area. And then your mind is being basically bombarded about a certain theme, about a certain, you know, history in time. And it's just a beautiful thing to enrich yourself with. And it's not less time consuming. You go for one day and you will make, you know, you'll be bombarded with a visual library for, you know, which is equal to going a whole month on a road trip and visit every site and every historical point. Museums are actually there to, you know, actually shorten that a little bit, in my opinion, right? Uh, in Gdańsk, we have the World War II Museum, which we go to with class almost every time, you know, to inspire our students and to like also like, and we do like outside activities, right, with that and to show to everyone like how mind enriching it is, you know, not even like real pieces, but like, you know, replicas of, you know, how the streets of Warsaw looked before and after the war, how the destruction uh, looked like, what kind of propaganda posters was uh, Italy using, for example, all these little details, the layout, which you even didn't think about, about that one his point in history, which uh, in that case was uh, World War II, because it's the museum of World War II. So yeah, museums are like really, and of course that connects with photos. You make your own photos, you decide from what angle you make the photos, so you have total control, right? So um, to later then inspire and fuel your own designs. Um, I know reading, yeah, reading is quite important. I should do more reading as well, but I'm very impatient. Like when I see a thick book, I just have like this fear that I will not have the patience, but I'm really good at reading articles. I have like articles, you know, I know like, okay, I, it's just like an hour of reading maximum and, you know, I fuel my mind and that is good. The more you know about the real world, not only visual wise, the more, excuse me, <clears throat> the more you feel inspired, right? And the more you, the more you know, the, the, the more you are able to make believable designs, all right? I think we talked about it in, uh, in episode two, but... Uh, Basically, it's a list of things to not underestimate, which you should do mm. as a mm. concept designer. Holy shit. Let's just uh, silence that. There we go. All right. Let's go to the next one. Observing entertainment. So, um, yeah, you hear, you know, people saying, you know, I play games. I play games because of research. Yeah. Um, no, you know, play games, of course, that is th if that's your hobby, it's good to have passion for video games. Fuck, you know, in the end, we I, I work in the video game industry because I loved video games when, you know, I was, uh, when I was young. And I still do, I just don't um, have as much time to play. But I still do when I have. And designing for video games is somehow just more fun to me. Like, every time you play a video game... I am uh, more of an observer than, you know, uh, a game player. Like, for example, th that new game came out, Apex, like I didn't even install it. I just watched my brother play it. I just watched um, uh, my friend play it. And that's kind of enough for me. Like, you know, I've seen, uh, I, I might be wrong. I should actually like try it. But as far as the visuals goes, like I like the designs, you know, I like how they design the level. And as a concept designer, it is good to know these things, what the industry is up to, right? Like it is very important for as a concept designer for you, like when you get like a level of a level designer and it's just, you know, gameplay elements and it needs to be low visually, um, visually defined, right? Because often... When I was working on uh, Hitman 2, they would give me like a, a piece of a level 
just a very basic block out in SketchUp or Unity. Um, or no, that, that was their own engine already. Um, the engine that Hitman is running on. Oh fuck, I forgot it, I'm so bad. Doesn't matter. Um, but you will get like a very boring piece of, you know, of, of a level. And then your job is to, okay, what will that blockade or you know how will that piece look like you know like the, the the gameplay piece where where you as the player will have to walk around it because there is something out there you know it cannot be just a straight path there needs to be a visual um uh, blockade is it going to be a building is it going to be a fence is it going to be you know um cars piled on each other uh, because it takes place in you know um some scrapyard, you know, it all depends on what kind of setting it is. And it is then your, let's say, task to um, to dress it up visually, right? So observing entertainment, watch movies, right? Very cool. Observe the lighting, how it works. Observe how on certain shapes the light is falling, all these things. Oh, man, it's a... It's, uh, if I would have to go in all detail, then it will be not a quick art talk time anymore. Anyway... An extra hobby. Uh, I think, you know, being passionate in life is uh, very important. So, um, an extra hobby that can fuel your main passion as a concept designer. Of course, it's not a must. Um, but I personally find it that it is um, very mind enriching. So, um, I, for example, even though most of my professional work is like, you know, in environments and props designs and and mood explorations uh, I, I love vehicle design right um i just i just have so much passion for it especially vehicles uh from the second world war right it was like a milestone in our development of technology right when you think about it since world war ii actually the technology of vehicles didn't change much right first helicopters you know world war ii First jet fighters, World War II. First assault rifles, World War II. Uh, combustion engines, you know, mastering the diesel engine, all that. We actually didn't progress that much when it comes to, you know, mechanical stuff. So uh, it's like a it's like a very nice milestone in our history, which I have uh, passion for. And that led me to, you know, exploring, you know, since I cannot own a fucking Tiger tank on my own and explore it, what I can do is buy a plastic bottle out of it and build it and paint it and weather it and like rotate it and have like a physical scale model out of it. Now this one is actually very shitty when I look back at it. I was kind of proud of it back in the day. This is already like five years ago. Uh, but it's the only one I have pictures of. Um, so, you know, th this is something that really like fuels the mind, right? Like um, different angles. You can even like take photos on your own and like trace it, change some designs out of it, make studies. But even when you build it with your own hands and you paint it and you weather it, you have a very nice physical um, feeling of it. You know, it's like having you know, like your own mini tank, but everything is like the same as the real one, only 72 times smaller because this is scale 1 on 72. So, uh, yeah, this is just... Uh, I guess a very nice supplemental hobby that you can have as a, as a concept designer. This is just to show how small it is, I guess, compared to an uh, to a NATO round. I don't know if this was a NATO round. Yeah. Oh well. Um, yeah, it's very. Um, it's you know, I don't say like you must do it, but like that extra edge of passion can give you like you know the upper hand in you know having the love for concept art which will result in even more believable designs all right so yeah more more shots here um yeah it's like the the weathering making you know the rust on it you know was was very fun to do uh, I mean, you still can see it as plastic right because it's very small by the way you know like these these um steel cables they don't really look like steel like you see it's like very thick and plastic in real life they were like kind of thinner and you know uh, this is the Panzer IV this is the Tiger uh, 
So it's that I encourage to try it. It's it, it gives you so much better understanding of proportions, design proportions. It gives you understanding, you know, of you know how vehicles were built, and that is all you need, right? You're not being an engineer. You're not like making mini engines in the inside. It's just like the outer layer that you build, obviously, all right? So. Um, that was a lot of pictures, Jesus. I even made like a bullet hole some shit, you know? So I just like would like fire up, uh, I would like heat like a, a needle and just like push through the plastic and it would look like a bullet hole, I guess. It still looks, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, very nerdy about it. And this is actually how small it is. <laughs> it's very, it's very small, yeah. Anyway, extra hobbies. So in my case, it's skill modeling. What can it be for you? Do you have to, you know, uh, no, you can, you can even do fishing like as your hobby. And then, you know, you're just every, to every river you go to every lake you go. It can be like your inspiration. You know, you go fishing in the morning and then you just also take photos of the landscape you are in. Uh, you, you catch a fish and it's like a nice design. You can, I don't know, it's like every, almost everything. Just being more passionate about life always helps. Uh, last but not least, the world. So um, all these points here, um, what do they have in common? That everything you extract it's from photos, museums, reading, observing uh, the entertainment industry, like video games and films, an extra hobby. Uh, observing the world is, uh, in my opinion, a thing that we can not ever uh, take for granted. Right. Even when you go to the store, to be be an be an observer. You know, look at cars. Look at how the light. You know, you know, goes through the trees. Go like go, fuel your mind constantly. Basically, you're always at work. But the world is such a beautiful inspirator. You know, like you should have the mind of when you look at a remote control and you see a fucking spaceship in there. Right. You see a potential to turn it into you know, a battleship cruiser or something. Something like it's just an example right so uh, once you collected oh one more thing collecting reference and keeping them in your mind um, one thing that I forgot doing studies all right do studies of like real vehicles make photos for example go to museums make photos and there is no way better to know and learn yourself their proportions of vehicles but also architecture I'm, I mean I'm talking here only about vehicles but it's for everything right make studies in landscape how lighting goes on you know rocks how does it reflect uh, the proportions of a vehicle right when you make a vehicle study before you design make at least a couple of studies of real life vehicles please do it it's so helpful like i've seen the difference of people that first do like logical studies um you know based on you know what they see what they've taken before they jump uh, rather than jumping straight into designing right so, uh, and then, you know, applying the reference. So once you've done all these, how are you going to apply it while working on your design, right? So, uh, um, so things you have to keep in mind when you are designing, for example, in this case, again, a vehicle, because we are talking, you know, about, uh, I'm going to give this an example, so I don't want to get off topic. Yes, I know it's a vehicle again, Jesus. I'll, uh, Try to do something else next time. All right. Okay. So um, it's very important to know, to immerse yourself in what kind of design you are making. Right. Um, most of the time when I'm, uh, when I'm designing, um, I ask myself a lot of questions. Right. The vehicle, what kind of, and what kind of environment does it have to operate in? That will impact the look of the vehicle a lot. Is it a vehicle that needs to traverse through the jungle, through the steps, through dusty terrains? If it's a dusty terrain, will it have to, you know, need some air filters that filter out all the sand and the dust? If it's a spaceship that's going out of the atmosphere, will it perhaps need like a secondary engine that, you know, because in space you don't have air, so air intakes will not work. Um, a good example of, you know, how it was well tackled was with the movie Oblivion, you know, like when, when Tom Cruise, um, no spoilers, but um, at some point Tom Cruise with, with his like personal spaceships, he, he goes like out of the atmosphere of the earth 
and then the conventional jet engines kind of like turn off and instead um, you know these like like uh, different kinds of engine basically like turn on and like very visually explained in the movie without you know stopping the movie and explain how the vehicle works so you know the environment impacts how the vehicle will look like and how it operates it the other thing that will you know impact how the vehicle will look like is the faction right whoops uh, by what kind of culture country uh, and faction it is being built by right that knowledge is super important. Um, take, for example, at uh, you know the Second World War and the doctoring that the Soviets were applying versus the doctoring and you know the the the, the thinking behind how they were thinking about how vehicles should be produced. Right? I think I mentioned that before, but you know, for example, Germans when they made a vehicle with the same function, for example, the tank. Germans were all about quality, right? They were all about, you know, protecting their crew, um, all about, you know, making like the best possible quality, super nice welding seams, very good quality, very complex engineering. Sometimes like I didn't understand why they have to make things that complex uh, versus the Soviets that just were like rough and but efficient and they just wanted to like pump as many tanks out of the factory. Um, in the end that impacted how they look like right study it go see for yourself how you know a russian tank from the second world war looked versus a german tank right um the technical level so again immersing yourself in the design that you are creating okay so um what what i find always uh, funny to look at but you know it's like well funny not that i'm like laughing at students jesus i'm not that mean but it's just you know um and that's why i'm making this video because before you jump into design like i see like people doing like really random shapes when like i give them a test to like design their own sh spaceships but they never you know ask themselves the questions of you know how to immerse myself into a design to make you know the design believable right like even when you play, for example, Halo, then then that is a certain universe and there are restrictions to that. Restrictions that will impact how that vehicle will look like, you know, and that is true for everything. With my personal project, 1952, like my technical level of that world is the Second World War. I'm going fucking wild with my shapes, but I'm not going to give my mech like laser guns and um you know stealth suits or something no it's still it's still that rough you know second world war feeling but exploring all kinds of shapes and it restricts me in a nice way right can't go too crazy i still want to relate to that technical level and last but not least the function function is i think uh, the first and foremost thing that will dictate how your design will look like right so, for example, the scout cars' um, main key feature is, you know, being fast in reconnaissance and being able to take somewhat of a punch. So, how so? How does it dictate? Well, you see, like, you know, some forward scanners, some antennas that gives you like a visual clue that you know they're all about reconnaissance. They all have like huge infrared scopes, you know, the which is inspired by the IR scopes that were used late in the war um the 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 feeling that they are armored is you know i'm using like this heavy plates right like it looks angular it looks aggressive uh sleek at the same time to also show that these uh, you know design explorations are you know they're, they're fast and they're maneuverable all right so um yeah it's uh all these things are you know it's it's just of course a portion love talking about it but um let's go actually to the next part how i came up with uh, with these designs so what can we actually um observe when we look first at them is that i'm not forcing myself to come up with super fucking crazy shapes they're actually very normal looking cars right they all don't exist and they all take you know inspiration from you know real life scout cars that were actually used by you know the, the german army and you know some shapes are here borrowed from uh, from the russians 
But other than that, nothing is crazy. I'm not coming up with super weird shapes. And I'm doing that on purpose. This is like, you know, to show that your design needs to be grounded most of the time. You only need to implement 20% of like uniqueness, right? So, um, and I don't even know what my 20% is here, you know, other than, you know, just like the different shapes and the interesting angles. And, you know, maybe like this frame is, is like cool to look at because it shows, you know, the manu maneuverability and how it can, you know, uh, like how strong its suspension is. Yeah, I guess. But other than that, it's a very, very, very grounded looking uh, design, which means I'm not going to use super crazy shapes. And that is what I like seeing. Like people sometimes think when I start out with design that, you know, the crazier it is, the more unique I am. Therefore, my design is, you know, super unique. But no, just even like when you look at movies, for example, Avatar, you know, you see that big spaceships coming in. It has a lot of things that it shares with real life stuff because it is relatable to the audience. That what it, That's what actually makes it a successful design. And here was an example, you know, it's not a sci super sci-fi vehicle. It's rather an alternative history setting vehicle. It doesn't exist, but it relates back to what we talked about earlier, right? Uh, to, you know, the environment, it's, you know, desert slash, you know, Russian steps, you know, wide wheels can go through mud. I even like, imp like even suggested that it's like going through mud by adding some dirt and splatters on it. That's an environment, the faction. You can see that it's a German faction by, you know, looking at real life German vehicles and they were really implementing that angular style. Um, Right, this is like a ah. Uh, don't I have a good example here? Let me go to you know to show you what I mean. Uh, gallery textures and ref mechanical. Where is mechanical? See, when I want to like look for it fast, it never works. Uh, Panzer. Or, yeah, like look, you know, look at the angles, right? They're using very rough angles for, you know, their, that's, their, that's their design language basically, right? So that's the faction. That is, you know, they're all about quality. Like it's beautifully manufactured, right? Look at this turret, like how sophisticated and well-crafted it is, you know, with the vision slits and everything versus, you know, this turret. Uh, by the way, I'm not bashing here, you know, the, 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 the Russians, but like, look how simple, just, it's just a drum with like slits in it. And it's like, look, look how, look, look how the seam even goes. It's not even like nice and straight, you know, because they have a different mind setting. They're a different faction, different culture, you know, they see, they saw war in a different way, but it's still, still, still the same function. It's still like a frontline tank. All right. So, um, and, and all these things are super important before you jump into the crazy, super science fiction designs. All right. Um, so yeah, faction, the technical level. So obviously, you know, um, because, because of the faction alone, the technical level is also pretty much adjusted to the second world war. I was even, even the details. I didn't even go too crazy with them. These are basically like variations of the original IR scopes that were you that were used. Even the antennas, you know, with like the the split end here. Um, you know, the headlights. It, it's very 40s style, right? But implementing some modern, cool-looking form to have that, you know, that you know, you still have that relation with the real world. But then at the same time, you have like, oh, well, hey, that's a fresh shape, you know. That that at least that's what I was going for. Yeah, uh, was there something else? Yes, of course. Uh, and the function, right, which we talked about, you know. Is it visible that it's fast? I hope so. Is it vis visible that it's a reconnaissance ve vehicle? Uh, I think so too. Is it visible um, that it can take a punch? Well, yeah, it definitely looks armored, you know. If I look like here at the windows, you know, there's like, the, the windows are not too big. They're like basically slits and they're kind of thick, right? So yeah, this is, you know, how to apply reference in a very, very short way, I guess, right? I hope that this kind of helps you. So um, 
I guess that will be it, you know, so collecting reference versus applying reference. Hope you, you know, learned a lot and, you know, the, the, the next part of this video will be, you know, you know, sketching these uh, mofos here. All right. So, yeah. See you in the next part, guys. All right. We are back. The fear of the white canvas. Shit. That's like a separate topic we could talk about. Okay, but let's stay on point here. Um, starting always with like with the white canvas, you know, to always like always, you know, kind of I don't know show off. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, it's I guess it's important, you know, start from scratch. Like be, be the be the master of your own mind rather than like you know being afraid. Like you have to like make that first initial line anyway, right? With through fundamentals. So um, what I'm basically doing here is like setting up very simple perspective boxes seeing uh checking out which view will like fit the best ending up scratching this one um, using like a very simple two-point perspective to flesh out those vehicles so um yeah to go back to the question if i see the shapes before i put them on canvas it's like a yes and no it's like um it's like i guess that answer is like very slowly answered uh like the, the, it's a, it's a it's a big eye opener to our students every time they join. Let, let's put it that way, because you know they go through a very disciplined course where they apply reference all the time. They know how to apply. They um, they know the struggle, what it is to keep your designs grounded versus going super advanced. They know how it is. You know what's in your head might not um, translate to paper that well because you know shapes sometimes in your head are not as well constructed when you put them on paper when they have to really rely on the hardcore perspectives right so um yeah a lot of important factors jesus but nevertheless uh, first part of this video is uh, real time so you see me like real time sketching here up to like 20 minutes and then it goes boom seven times eight times speeds eight times eight times yeah um you know or otherwise it's just too long um yeah and you know I'll, I'll keep like my my energy for for you know when the spring term starts it's uh it's gonna be one hour in total guys it's the longest episode ever but uh the initials sketching dynamic sketching and design phase is like uh, real time so um yeah, I encourage you to do the same. What I'm doing here is I'm basically now, you know, like suggestively making, you know, the lines. Um, these are just like personal notes for me, right right here, what I'm doing. Uh, they're cluttery, they're not clean, but they lay out uh, for me the proportions. Back on my background, you can see like some amazing, cool, real life scout cars, which uh, you can see like I'm not going too crazy like I'm really staying true to the core of you know the design language and, and that is sometimes what design is right it really also of course depends on the theme but I really encourage you guys to stay grounded to, like relate back to the real world like you'll see that the audience will also relate with that much more than you making like a crazy fucking design made out of, you know, I don't know, like steel feathers and it's like a spaceship from the far future. And it's like, okay, cool. But you know, what are the proportions? How big it is? The thing is with like grounded designs like this, there's a lot of, a lot of benefits, right? Reference is right at your feet. It is a good exercise before you go to more like advanced stuff. stuff. It shows you scale, like because we are able to relate back to it you know, we all know how much, how big a door is, you know, or like a wheel and, you know, the amount of detail that, that is put there, you know. There are so many things about the designs here I make that, uh, again, relate back to the real world. And keeping the things in mind that we just, you know, mentioned uh, in the first part, all right. Uh, yeah, of course, like, there, there are many points, many more points that I, that I could have covered, but like I, I guess like I just covered points that like came first to to mind. Uh, for example, you know, an extra hobby is again not a must. Sometimes it's like a number of hobbies that you know have like the collective power, um, you know. 
and to 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 show anything else than just gaming you know because most of the, most of like the aspiring concept artists you know they they love video games like it's even like in the job descriptions and it's good you know like the love for video games yeah that's obvious you work in the you want to you are a concept artist so there is already your love for video games uh, additionally playing them is you know showing even more love you know that that's good but what if you tackle you know it in a different way by actually creating also something but taking a break from concept artists concept art like scale modeling you know um just my opinion just my two cents you know so yeah you're like the the first sketch is kind of complete um later on you know so things to keep in mind is that your fundamentals need to be super important which we hope battery low and um, which we cover of course in class you know how to tackle perspective uh, very you know quickly and efficiently um i try to like skip the boring perspective exercises most of the time by going straight into you know um uh studies exercises so we like basically kill two birds in one stone by studying for example you know the the, the scout car um that you see here on the screen on the right side by making a drawing out of it and you study, you know, the vehicle proportions, how hardware is created. You have to know the perspective. It's like oof, 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 all in one, right? Um, and that is sometimes needed. Like, come on, you'll be burning your brain all the time anyway with this kind of job. So, you know, better get used to it, right? Like, so, so show some dedication, right? Of course, we also do like the more simplified um, perspective. Uh, exercises but we really quickly jump into you know forcing you know um, the students to you know do like uh, real life studies to ha have that two in one effect and of course we explain how to do it as well so you know our guidance is there um anyway it sounds like a big fucking commercial for the school now i'm sorry i'm, I'm just it's just you know telling what we are all about also i guess it's very important also like again if you're like thinking about uh uh, applying to focal point spring term seats are still open just saying intros are fully booked by the way holy shit that got like sold down in two days um still still uh, there's still some seats available for uh, the advanced classes and we are also very proud to announce that we will have uh some workshops going on as well with um with people from all over the industry Andre Chumbo, um, and there are other names on the list that we uh, did not announce yet, but we will shortly. Anyway, going back to the design. So you see me here like exploring like the shapes and I'm like, I'm trying to like relay the back to the real world all the time, but like trying to make it fresh as well. Like you, like I'm, I'm trying to make the sides more bulky I'm trying to elevate the design, give it a more faster, sportier look, a little bit even modern. So, uh, so yeah. So yeah, at this point, I'm like not seeing entirely, like I see it roughly what, what I'm, you know, d designing and I, I kind of see it in my head already at that point, but, but by setting it on paper or on this digital canvas in this case i'm um, i'm like experimenting okay so the, the thing is like okay so what the thing that i have in my head will it work when i actually put it on canvas right and then i play with the proportions i balance out the shape right the, the, the all the shapes that i come up with they have to somehow follow up on each other um yeah, that that's a whole different story you know how to how to make um, how to make designs work like that you know like how do you come up with the shapes that make it cool and how do they balance each other out right you look at every design every design has a certain flow design flow that's what I call it and every single shape has to impact on one another right because in real life we make vehicles functional but a lot of vehicles like these they become part of our pop culture and then we relate to them as cool 
which ends up being you know okay so the shapes are only cool but no wrong they they have been built with a function behind it and knowing that function will open your doors to be able to come up with your own shapes while applying the same philosophy as real vehicles do and uh, that is exactly what i'm uh, what my what i'm attempting here so yeah So it is the face, you know, um, you know, three three faces, I guess that we can uh, that are like being uh, um, explored here, or I mean, applied, which is you know the the rough sketching face, which is uh, which is this, right? Which what what I'm doing here right now. Uh, then we have the face of. Um, of uh, you know making a tighter line drawing on top of it where we like uh, bake down the design so to speak you know I get rid of all the suggestional lines I decide uh, in, in a final way you know what the sub detailing will look like but still in a very sketchy way right like in real time uh, these these sketches with with color I really wanted to uh, keep it under two hours and um, yeah that's that's what I did or two and a half I'm, I'm not, no no I might be lying uh, because the, the color kind of the rendering always takes uh, some of the time and, and I wanted to like show those designs in uh, you know in a certain lighting condition not too complex though just like a basic lighting scenario so the shapes pop out better a uh, very basic material indication some mod splatters here and there just to you know give it that extra extra edge of you know presentation but uh, it's very common how I work also uh, in the industry, you know, when I'm um, doing 2D stuff. Um, this kind of phase always still happens in, uh, in 2D, right? Like um, when I was working on uh, some uh, spaceships recently for uh, NetEase, you know, that, that big Chinese company that is apparently taking over the whole game industry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but they're making Diablo though sound, so they're kind of like taking over. Anyway, but yeah, I, I, I explored, you know, the spaceships in the same way, and then, you know, uh, you take it down to the next level, and you can use anything you think that will benefit you, right? And we explore that in school too, you know, is it 3D that will help you better? Is it is it even worth it to make a whole fucking 3D model out of it? Or just a simple block out and then make the rest on top of it? And many, many ways to tackle designs as long as you have design knowledge and I, in my opinion fundamentals are very strong before you know you jump into uh, into photo bashing and uh, 3d and, and all that uh, fancy stuff it, it really like opens your mind and you're completely free once you're able you know to sketch freely and convince your designs in a very fast way that way right so uh yeah nailing down here like suggesting the details here of how the windows will look like right uh perspective again very simple so you know everything takes place in this like this box this 3d box and inside of there you know i'm just like eyeballing kind of the perspective so it's like not super accurate right uh you'll see that uh, there are kind of uh some perspective mistakes there that i ended up fixing uh, was a fast fix anyway you know I collapse all the layers and select some part of the vehicles and you know with control T I just move around the corners to adjust some shapes uh, like I do here you know just adjusted the wheel there you go yeah things that uh, you know again are uh, well I'm not even mentioning it you know as a concept designer you already should be working digitally you know I mean I have special love for traditional art and I still have a traditional sketchbook, but uh, professionally, it's uh, only uh, only digital. Yeah, it's just more accurate. Where you know, three D also comes into place. It allows you to be more accurate. So yeah, like take it, like look at the vehicle on the right. Right, it has like those awesome corners going on. Um, like think back like in the 40s that was a very modern shape and it kind of stick looks like up to date like if I if like you have no knowledge of like uh, 
I guess, military history. Like seeing this kind of vehicle nowadays kind of would also make sense, you know? Like, oh yeah, that's just, you know, an armored, uh, armored fighting vehicle, you know? It, it doesn't look like super old at all. Uh, except for like the headlights, I guess, that makes it kind of like old school. Right? Yeah, tell me in the comments. Like, yeah, interact with me in the comments if you agree. Uh, tell me what you think about it. Also, let me know if this longer format interests you too. Uh, not everybody has time or the patience to um, to sit down in front of a YouTube video. So, uh, you know, you can sketch on the fly and, you know, have this on your background, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So the small windows indicate that, you know, it is, uh, it, it's again, visual hooks that communicate that this design is, uh, that this vehicle is fast, but armored, right? Like what do all armored vehicles have in common? Well, they don't have big windows most of the time because you want to cover, you know, the vehicle with as much armor plating as you can to protect the crew. And then, you know, your payoff, you're paying with, you know, less visibility, of course, but who cares about visibility anyway? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you miss, you see me like canceling and deleting out, you know, shapes that I came up with and then I uh, redo them. Because this is like the exploration phase. Right. I could like easily keep that one, copy paste the whole thing and, you know, make uh, an another variant of a sub variant of this variant. And then you can make like tons of sketches that way, like in one day, like holy shit. Once your dynamic sketching abilities like are trained and defined and, you know, you know your perspective and, you know, like you can eyeball this fast, you know, uh, which takes pra takes some practice. You can like, you know, just sketch on the fly. And it's like even sometimes needed in studios, you know, you're like in a meeting and you're just like, you know, while your producer or director is talking, you're like, you know, s sketching out some, some ideas very, very fast because, uh, yeah, you're the visual guy, you know. Your words are a lot worth, but your images are, you know, ten thousands of times much more worth than worth than your words, because that's your job. And uh, yeah. You're like basically the hand of the art director, you know, you know, Game of Thrones, hand of the king. Concept art is basically a hand of like, you're like, you executing, you know, his ideas. Like he, the, the art directors usually, you know, talk and like show reference. And then you, you, um, you're the one that needs to visualize that with, of course, some infusion from your own creativity. That's in the end what a concept artist should do. There are, of course, art directors out there that like paint and design on their own. And that's such a huge morale boost for the rest of the team, you know? seeing basically your boss working alongside you, you know, giving the example. Um, basically, they don't then somehow, I notice they don't have to like spend much time talking because, you know, they just make one piece, they talk about it and they like, they benchmark it for the rest kind of, you know, what needs to be expected. Rather than just giving you like, you know, sometimes a very vague clues like, yeah, it should be like this and it should be awesome. But, you know, what do you understand under awesome? What style, uh, etc. Again, a totally different topic, you know, how to work in a team, how to handle art directors, how to, you know. Yeah. The rough face is almost done. We're going to, uh, I guess I have to like finish here the, the front window of the of the bottom design. Uh, by the way, I still don't know which one is my favorite. It was just like a nice fun exploration, which I did and uh, that's it. By the way, I totally fucking forgot. I did them um, as a demo in uh, in Prague in uh, Czech Republic for the event Splash very cool I did a talk there and I did a workshop the day after so uh, it was uh, it was cool that I was invited uh, Prague amazing city 
again, you know, traveling, you know, I forgot to put traveling on the list of, you know, how to collect reference, but, you know, I guess that really falls under, you know, observing the world. But yeah, traveling, uh, super helpful, inspirational, you know, all the cliche stuff you heard before, Jesus. Yeah. But it's true, like, it's really, it, it is, you know, just go out there, right? Like, you, you know, when you, like, uh, play, like, for example, all these open world games like Skyrim, and, like, you, you go out of the first cave, and, like, you, you, like, have this open world in front of you, and then you're so amazed that you can go everywhere you want. Well, you can do that in the real world, too. <laughs> you know, you, you don't have, like, you know, a, a, a mysterious temple or a cave around the corner, because, you know, the world of Skyrim is just, you know, zipped. But uh, you can basically go where you want in the real world too, right? So be curious about that as well. Not only uh, video games. Have passion for it uh, because, yeah, I played Skyrim myself as well. Love the game. But, uh, yeah, the real world, nothing beats that. Because in the end, Skyrim did a lot of reference on from, you know, the real Nordic culture and, you know, real environments. So, and here is the second phase. Boom, we jumped into eight times speed. Makes me look so much better. <laughs> oh, just when it goes like fast, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, but it's eight times. Um, you don't, don't want to watch it, you know, uh, all the way on YouTube, I guess. Or if you do, let me know. Uh, yeah. The wheels are nothing special, right? They're just wheels, and they have like even like their um, the, the rims are even like protected by like this triangular armored plate, and even that is taken from a real reference. So it's not even like a new thing, but it it's nice. It's just cool, and then this you know steel bumper in the front is is something that I came up with um, and, and like I subdivided into like more complex shapes and then I have like this nice balance between you know the the simpler shapes on top of the vehicle and you know the more mechanical uh, shapes on uh, the bottom and that is also a good example of design flow how to balance out your details is it good to like pump your design full of details everywhere uh, no, usually not. You should like give your design rest. Uh, something that I also struggle with sometimes. You know, I always struggle with all the things. By the way, with all the things that I mentioned, I still struggle to this day because um, I, I don't ever feel that I'm there. All right, I feel that I improve, and I'm like super happy that I can you know educate people and like people are requesting that. But in the end, I'm learning here on my own as well with every single sketch, even with a study, right? So uh, here, you know, the, the turret, the hatch, very inspired of, you know, the real technology, you know, the, 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 the scopes, the slits on top of the turret, here the windows, boom, boom, oh, damn, I even have to, like, talk faster now. Uh, but yeah, it's fun. But here, you know, the design is pretty complete, so it's, like, really, like, just, you know, nail down the, nail down the lines that are, like, definitive, like, you know, they're, like, the... I, I'm baking down the design basically letting loose of you know the the shapes that I'm not happy with and I'm bringing the shapes forward that I was happy with in the first place here I like from from scratch like designing that ha that, that IR scope you know there's some details you know I don't need an under sketch of sometimes I don't need an under sketch at all but like I, I'm just so used to that that this is like my my method you know okay, you can try it on your own see if it fits you um, Traditionally, what I do is, you know, or make like a very basic layout with my markers, with a very light marker, like an N0 or an N1. And then on top of that, just ink, or I do, you know, just with pencil. With pencil, you can even erase it when you make a mistake. But I try to avoid that, right? It trains you to be more confident, it trains you to, you know, make use of, you know, the lucky mistakes that you make, rather than be always so fucking organized, right? Some artistic chaos is needed in this in this in this work. Yeah, and um, you know some of the shapes here are not entirely explained. Like uh, 
I guess this one is all right, but like the other design, uh, yeah, that one, that one on the right, on the bottom, there are some corners going on that I still not quite understand, but uh, oh well. Like if I would like make a final design out of it, I would definitely fix it, but I would not pick it as my final design anyway. It will be probably this one. I just, I don't know, I just like it more. But then I have like a couple of, you know, designs in my sketchbook, which I even like more. So I still don't know. Like, so this design is still work in progress, right? It's still, I did not make like a final, final design out of it. I mean, this is just exploration, right? I still like count this as a uh, rough. Yeah. So some armored rims around the door. Basically, I imagine this door like opening up, like, you know, uh, uh, in directing the roof like you know like the like some sports cars do it like the mercedes sls which is also german so it's like maybe that connection it's cool to like come up with these modern relatively modern shapes but then implement like the old school factor in it like the the rough angles are like very German World War II style. The headlights are like still very, you know, old looking. Um, yeah. Making the front a little bit shorter. Yeah, I was like looking at it like, holy shit, was that front that long from the beginning? But yeah, uh, copy paste the wheel because who cares? Uh, yeah, copy and paste every time you can, guys. It's like yeah, and and you know when you have like detailing in your design as well, like when you have like screws in your design of, or paneling, keep your design consistent, right? We we talk that about in class in a very extensive way to like how to make your designs work, you know. When people are making their own designs they're like really like forcing their shapes and they're like they end up with like different design languages across one vehicle and that is just really confusing and it just the design doesn't flow at all so yeah uh here i'm coming like uh you're making like an under sketch for this one because i like, huh, want something bigger something more complex it needs to be a little bit different so yeah and i already like know the function right or it consists of two scopes one is like a uh, no, one is actually like a big searchlight which sends out, you know, infrared waves. And then those infrared waves, they bounce back in the dark from objects and they bounce back into the smaller scope, which uh, is on the side. And that gives like an image. Uh, it gives an image back, you know, so you can see that way you can see at night. That's uh, that's roughly how it works, you know. All I know, they were using two, two types, two sets of main equipment to uh, see in the dark, and that was new technology, which uh, it was re revolutionary technology. They still fucking lost the war anyway, but uh, yeah, they had like a lot of uh, new technology that you know they were like counting on the Wunderwaffe to save the to to save their ass, but. Uh, yeah. Here I'm making like some uh, negative spaces into design, you know, some room for a big antenna or something, just to fortify the feeling that it is a reconnaissance vehicle, you know, there's a huge cable going around the antenna and all that stuff, uh, making it just more interesting, you know. Yeah. So yeah, all the line drawings are done, and uh, the last part is, of course, you know, just giving it a quick value. <laughs> so uh, I'm just stealing, color picking the, yeah, I'm color picking, F fuck, why not? I'm color picking the, you know, the tank that I have there on the back, which is like the, the that was the default paint since 1943 for all German vehicles. See, like, why do I know all these things, like... You probably must be already sick from all the World War II stuff that I'm always mentioning in the in, the, in these quick art talks. But <laughs> I'm a nerd, so I'm just going to continue. They were using this uh, uh, default paint since 1943, the, uh, the the khaki paint or something. I don't know how it was called. And uh, uh, yeah, I just basically stole that and and used that for my. Uh, for my default base color. I'm blocking in my design with designs with, you know, the colors, giving it like a very desaturated gray, blue 
color for the tires and here I'm ready starting you know to shade it in always start with the shadow because uh, somehow for me personally the shapes pop out way better for me at first when I start with a shadow rather than just you know starting with the highlights it feels quickly very washed out when I start with the rough highlights so that is my way of building up slowly I am kind of like still thinking where the light is coming from and in this case it was like coming for this design it's like coming from the top but slightly slanted towards the right side because the left side is kind of like still in shade right uh, pardon me yeah Yeah, so, you know, the, the fundamentals of, you know, how lighting works come into play here. But uh, we're almost done with uh, the video, so I have to be uh, I have to be quick about what I want to cover here. I guess, you know, yeah, let me know down in the comments what would you like to see next. If you like this format, um, try it on your own. Let me know how it is. What would you talk about next? Is it maybe lighting on its own? Um, working in-house versus freelancing uh, all that kind of stuff a lot of stuff we can talk about so yeah here I'm uh, stealing some decals the the German Iron Cross uh, for the record this is not a Nazi symbol like you can you don't I you maybe you don't believe me or not but I haven't actually chewed out online for using this symbol like, uh, oh, you're a Nazi. No, I'm not a Nazi. My my forefathers fucking fought the, the Nazis, right? I'm, I'm Polish. We were, like, fighting the Nazis from the beginning to the end. Jesus. Uh, no, this is the German Iron Cross. Um, they're still using it, by the way. So, you know, I showed, like, an image to the guy that claimed that I'm a Nazi. I showed, like, an image of, like, an Eurofighter, which is, like, the current jet fighter. Uh, for for NATO and he was like oh oh okay yeah, you know so uh, yeah do your research be before you before you you know claim someone as being a Nazi uh, this is just historic alternate history so you know yeah nailing down the other vehicle. Uh, so like the the color you know color is also very important just to just to make a quick note it's not only that i am making this design more clear by you know giving it color but because of you know of course you know the, the light that falls on the vehicles the, the shapes uh they show the shapes more faster you know because line drawing can be cluttery and color helps you know of course you know to give you know the, the feeling you know of the design together with some decals it can you know give that nice complexity that you're after so yeah anyway uh let me know what you uh what you thought about it uh you know i read all of the comments always reply as well so you know like comment like and subscribe all that stuff that i always forget to mention but uh, you know you don't have to um I just it's just much appreciated of course if you watch it till the end holy shit thank you very much hope you enjoyed it um, and uh, yeah I'll see you guys uh, next time again thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it